Jenna. Today we are going to discuss on VIP question chapter 3 electric current and direct current circuit. Okay, so question number one A 2 ampere current is flow through a wire, calculate the quantity of charge if time given is 30 seconds. Okay, so here we have the current 2 ampere and we have the time taken is 30 seconds. Therefore, our R is equal to dq over dt and the quantity of charge q is equal to it so substitute i is 2 ampere t is 30 second so the quantity of the charge is equal to 60 coulomb answer is a okay next question number two a copper conducting rod carries a current of 15 ampere the cross-sectional area of the copper rod is a square of the side and each side is 4 millimeter its length is 60 meter Copper has a resistivity of 1.6 exponent negative a. We can calculate the resistance of the copper rod. Okay, so here the equations that we can use here is R equals to rho L over A, where rho is a resistivity 1.69 exponent negative a, length is 60 meter, and the area here because this is a square and each of the size is each of the side is four millimeter. Okay, four millimeter. Therefore, the area here is 4 exponent negative 3 squared. Okay, so this is how we find the area of the square. Okay, so after pressing the calculator, the answer that we will get for the resistance of the copper rod is equal to 0 0.06 ohm. Okay, so the answer is D. Okay, question number 3. The length of the certain conductor of the resistance 100 ohm is double and the cross-sectional area is half. So find the new resistance, okay? So initially, when R equals to 100 ohm, length, for example, is the L, and the area here, for example, is A, okay, rho is rho, okay? So this is before, okay? After that, we want to find the new R, okay? New R when L2 is equals to 2L, because the question mentioned double up, and then the new area is only half, okay? Or 0 0.5 of the initial area, so the answer is to find the new resistor, okay, where the resistivity remain unchanged yeah, because we're using the same conductor. Okay, so we can use ratios to do, okay, where R1 over R2 is equal to rho1 L1 over A, rho2 L2 over A2. Okay, so we can substitute in R1 initially is 100, R2 we don't know. Okay, rho1, rho and rho we can cancel because we're using the same conductor, same material. Okay, so L1 if I say is L, A is A. L2 is 2L and A2 is 0 0.5A. Okay, so we can cancel off L and L, A and A. Okay, therefore the new resistance R2 is equal to 4 times 100. Okay, so it's equal to 400 ohm. Okay, so the answer is D. Okay, next we go to question number 4. So this question is related to the temperature with the resistance. Okay, a wire coin has a resistance of 8 ohm at the temperature of 80 degree, a resistance of 7.2 ohm at the temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. So what is the temperature coefficient of the resistance at 20 degrees Celsius? Okay, so here, okay, uh, they give you the information where when T equals to 80 degrees Celsius, the resistance is 8 ohm. So when T equals to 30 degrees Celsius, the resistance is 7.2. Okay, so we want to find the coefficients when T equals to 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, R is equal to R naught. Okay, so we want to find what is the coefficient, so the temperature coefficient alpha. Okay, so usually when you want to use these the, the equations to find, okay, uh, we will start from the basic R0, when R0 is usually temperature is 20 degree. So we can form two equations. The first equation is between 30 degree with 20 degree. Okay, so the first equation is R equals to R0, 1 plus alpha delta T. Okay, so R is 7.2, R0 we don't know. 1 plus alpha, okay, alpha is the unknown. Delta T is 30 minus 20. Okay, so this is the first equation where we will get 7.2 equals to R naught 1 plus 10 alpha. Okay, so this is the first equation. Okay, the second equation is between 80 degrees Celsius with 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the second equation is 8 equals to R naught 1 plus 80 minus 20 alpha. Okay, so 8 is equal to R0, 1 plus 60 alpha. Okay, so this is the second equation. Okay, so to find the temperature coefficients, we can use ratio where equation 1 over equation 2, 
okay 7.2 over 8 equals to r naught 1 plus 10 alpha over r naught 1 plus 60 alpha okay so r naught r naught we can cancel therefore the answer that we will get the coefficients is equals to 2.27 exponent negative 3 per degree celsius continue with questions number five the series circuits with two battery with 1.5 volt give how much voltage to the light bulb okay so here we have two battery both of the battery is 1.5 volt 1.5 volt okay and then it connected series with the light bulb so the question asks us to find the voltage of the light bulb okay so we want to find what is the voltage here of the light bulb okay so since we connected with two batteries okay each of the battery is 1.5 therefore the voltage of the light bulb is 1.5 plus 1.5 because it's connected in series we will get 3 volt okay answer is A okay we continue with question number 6 in the circuit 3 resistor receive the same amount of voltage okay so here the voltage here is 24 volts huh? because it's connected in parallel that's why it will receive the same amount of the voltage okay calculate the total resistance in this circuit okay so if you refer to the diagram here we have R1, R2, R3 where R1 is 1 ohm, R2 is 2 ohm, R3 is 3 ohm. Okay, and R1, R2, R3 are connected in parallel. So we want to find R parallel. Okay, so it's 1 over R equals to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Okay, so 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. Okay, therefore R total or R effective is equal to 12.22 or is equal to 0 0.55 ohm. Okay, so the answer again is A. Okay, next one, question number 7. Okay, so question number 7 is uh, a Kishaw flaw where we have the circuit with two loops. So the can determine the value of I1, I2 and I3. Okay, so here we have two loops. So the first loop here, okay, is actually moving in anti-clockwise. Okay, it's moving with anti-clockwise. Okay, so it's moving in anti-clockwise. Okay, and the second loop also move in an anti-clockwise. Okay, it's actually up to you. Huh? Okay, if I say it's given anti-clockwise, we just follow. Okay, so the Kitchen first law state that I that enter to the junction is equal to I out from the junction. Okay, here we have two junction, junction A and also junction B. Okay, so the current I1 come out from junction A, okay, passing through R4, 5 ohm, and then it will enter to junction B okay so this is I1 where is into the B out from A and then enter junction B okay next one you see this one label I color it as yellow color okay so this is I1 okay next one is I2 okay I2 is come up from junction A and then passing through the resistor R3 and then entering to the junction okay so this whole circuit here is actually I2 okay I2 that passing through okay we also have I3 where I3 is come up from B, junction B and then entering to junction A. Okay, so B is come up from junction B and then move in anti-clockwise, enter to junction A. Okay, so we have I1, I2 and I3. Okay, so the first feature flaw we call it as junction. Okay, because anything also refers to the junction. So for example, the junction that I refer is uh, junction A. Therefore, current that entering, okay, entering to the junction is I3 okay I1 is out from the junction I2 also out okay so I3 is equal to I1 plus I2 okay so this is the first equation okay we use the kitchen first law where I equals to I out okay I in equals to I out okay next potential difference is equal to zero okay so if let's say we start from junction A okay start from junction A current will passing through the resistor R4 okay so R4 and the loop, okay, this is the loop where the loop here also moving upward. Okay, so since they are moving upward, so it's positive. Okay, so when the current passing through the resistor, actually it's the energy loss. So we must substitute negative because the energy loss, I R. Okay, where I here is I1, R is 5. Okay, so after that, it will passing through the battery of EMF1, uh, is 28. Okay, and the directions, okay, the directions of the loop here is out from the terminal positive. Okay, therefore, we will substitute in positive 28. Okay, after that, it will move again and then it will come to the junction B and then 
passing through the resistor R1. Okay, R1 is 4 ohm. Okay, so if you refer here, the directions of the current is to the left and the directions of the loop also to the left. So both of them are same direction. So I will substitute here positive because of same direction. And then when current I3 passing through the resistor, actually it's potential drop. So it's negative. R1 is 4 ohm. Okay, and then current that passing through is I3. Okay, after that, it will continue to move and then move downward. Okay, so when you move downward, the directions of the current I3 also moving downward. Okay, so since they are having the same direction, so we will substitute in positive. Okay, then after that, because the current passing through the resistor is the potential drop, okay, energy loss, uh, therefore, it's equal to I, where I is I3, R is 2 ohm. Okay, after that, it will come back to junction A, so it will equal to 0. So this is the second equations that we obtain. Okay. Okay, next. Second loop. Okay, for second loop, we will still start from junction A. So junction A, it will go in anti-clockwise direction. Okay. After that, it will go up and then entering negative terminal. Okay, out from terminal positive. Okay. So it's positive because it's up from the positive. Eh? Okay. So our EMF here is 7 volt, so it's positive 7 volt. Okay, after that, we'll continue to R3. Okay, R3 is passing through by current I2. Okay, so I2, so I will write IR, where I is I2, R is, the star is given, 1 ohm. Okay, after that, it will continue to move, and then it will going down, okay, to the passing through the battery okay so when you're passing through the battery it come out from terminal negative okay so when it come out from terminal negative we will write as negative 28 okay so if you continue uh, the loop is going downward and then passing through a, a battery where the battery come out from terminal negative so it's negative 28 and then we're going down again it will passing through r4 okay where r4 the current directions of the current is upward and the directions of the loop is downward so it's actually opposite direction so in opposite we should substitute negative and then because this is a potential drop okay when the current passing through the resistor is actually potential drop okay so we must substitute negative because of the potential drop okay i is equals to okay we need to use uh, Okay, so because it's opposite direction, the directions of the loop and the, the current is opposite, therefore, it's equals to negative, okay, and then um, because of the potential drop, so we must substitute negative 5i1. Okay, so we, if you rearrange back the equations, okay, in the form of a, i1, b, i2, c, i3 equals to d, say, we can use the calculator to calculate the value for i1, i2, and i3. Okay, so the first equation here is i3 equals to i1 plus i2 okay so we can write as i1 plus i2 minus i3 is equal to zero okay so this is the first equation okay the second equation is this one okay so if we arrange back we will get negative 5 i1 minus 6 i3 equals to negative 28 okay and then the third equation this one is equal to 5 times the value for I1 minus I2 equals to 21. Okay, so if you press calculator, okay, we can go to the mode. Okay, after that, from the mode, you can choose uh, the unknown. So we will choose unknown equals to 3. Okay. Okay, so if you use the calculator, we can press the calculator by going to the mode and then you go to the uh, unknown. Where here, we have 3 unknown. Okay, after that you key in, okay, you key in. So the answer that we will get is I1 equals to 3.75 ampere, I2 is equal to negative 2.22 ampere, I3 is equal to 1.54 ampere. Okay, so the answer here is B. Okay, next one is question number eight. A 10 volt battery with the internal resistor. Okay, so here we have 10 volt and internal resistor of 1.5. Okay, it's connected to a 6 ohm resistor. Okay, determine the rate of the energy transfer. Okay, so the rate of the energy transfer, okay, to the electrical energy in the uh, battery. Okay, so what should we do is, 
we can use because the rate of the energy is actually power. So power is equal to IV or power is equal to okay, V squared over R okay, or we can use power surface equal to I squared R. Okay, so we need to find out what is the power. Okay, so now we have uh, the resistor and also we have the V total uh, because the question say energy transfer okay, in the battery. Okay, not dissipated. Uh. If I say dissipated, we must only take consider the resistor. Okay, now is the total uh, transfer to the electrical energy in the battery. Okay, so we can use P equals to V square over R. Okay, it's actually much more easier. So we can take. Okay, this one is 6 ohm. Eh? P power is equal to V square over R. Okay, where V here we have the EMF eh? because it's in the battery, so it's 10 square. Okay, so since this is the rate of energy transfer to the battery, so V here we will take the total V eh? is 10 square and R also we must take R total. Okay, R total. Okay, where here we have only two resistor connected series, so it's 1.5 plus 6. Okay, therefore we will get 13.3 watt. Okay, so the answer here is A. Okay, okay. Example 9. When the resistor R2 is set to 40 ohm, what is its V out? Okay, so we want to set this one in 40 ohm. Okay, so we can use the um, potential divider to find V total over V1 equals to R total over R1. Okay, so V total is 10 volt. Okay, V1 we don't know. R total is including 10 ohm and also R1. Okay, so 10 plus 40 ohm. Okay, R1 is the value for only the V. Okay, so here V out is 40 ohm. Eh? Okay, the resistor that connected with the V out is 40 ohm. Okay, so we can find out the value for V where it's equal to 400 over 50. Okay, it's equal to 8 ohm. Okay, next is questions number 10. Okay, next is question number 10. To make the potential meter, the driver cell is 4 volt. It's connected across the 1 meter length of the resistor. What is the potential difference across each 1 cm length of the wire? Okay, so meaning that if let's say here we have 4 volt, okay, it's connected with a length of 100 cm. Okay, so we want to find what is the potential difference across if the wire only 1 cm. Okay, so we want to find what is the reading of the potential. Okay, so we can use the potential meter to find where V1 equals to V2 is equal to L1 over L2. Okay, where V1 here we are referring is the yellow color. Okay, is the uh, 4 volt and the length is 100 cm. Okay, V2 here is, okay, V2 we are referring is a small loop here. Okay, where the small loop here, okay, we have V, we don't know. However, the length here is only 1 cm. Okay, so help me to calculate what is the value for V2. Okay, so V2 is equal to 4 over 100. Okay, it's equal to 0 0.04 volt. Okay, so that's all for this VIP questions for chapter 3. Thank you, see you on next video, bye.